How was up, y'all? It's popping in. Today, about to react to this video by Honest. It's titled Flop Albums with Hit Songs. Oop! Oop! We got Zayn in the thumbnail, Miley, and Sam Cook. It's Sam Cook, right? Sam something. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna get the tea and see why they supposedly flop. Let's watch. Flop albums with hit singles. What happens when you can't strike gold more than once? Sometimes you're left with an album in the dust. Damn. Sometimes the album serves as a house for the smash hit and everything else is secondary to it. Other times there are genuinely thorough albums tucked away and the smash song was the outlier and selling point of an otherwise more eclectic album that might be a little too left field to appeal to mainstream audiences. When I thought of this video, the very first song that came to my mind was Miley Cyrus's Flowers the biggest hit of the year, completely inescapable, oh, yeah. and Miley's big comeback moment. After the gym that was classic <laughs> parts, I was hoping that Flowers was just a big comeback radio single. I remember too, I used to react to like, uh, I need to react to more of those videos, but people just haven't sent me any lately, but I used to react to like, oh, most popular songs in the 2000s and the 2010s, and uh, like each year, basically. What were those videos called? Most popular song from each year. Anyway, there would be a lot of songs that I did not know at all. And I would just be like, and people would always be like, oh, how did you know this song? It was everywhere. You can't escape it. And <laughs> it just reminded me of that because he, he said that in this video. Like, oh, you couldn't escape it. I'm just like, what song was he talking about? Because <laughs> I was able to escape it apparently. If it was this year, she had a really hot song this year that you couldn't escape. If you put a gun to my head and ask me what it was or how it sound, I'll be up out of here. And that the album itself would dive into more interesting sounds and personal themes. And boy, was I wrong. It's a bland album. Damn. And as much as I feel oh, Flowers the is middle of the road, I do think it's the most catchy and instant song on the record. And also Miley's voice sounds stellar on it. Funny enough, I had previously compared the but songs. But you know what, though? There are some songs that grab my attention when I'm, like, out and about, like, at restaurants or, you know, mall or whatever the fuck. Um, if they're kind of catchy, then they, they might grab my attention and I might, like, recall them. But if they're just generic pop songs, like, I, I tune it the fuck out. Like, I'm not even paying attention to it or taking it in whatsoever because pop is by far my least favorite genre so, well, that's not true. There are genres I don't listen to at all. But anyway, pop is just not, I don't, I don't care for it, like, whatsoever. So, yes, it's possible that maybe I did hear a song by her, but I just, like, completely let it go in one ear, not the other. To Miley's 2017 song, Malibu. And I didn't expect it to have a similar fate, but it did. And the summer vacation proved to not have any lasting ooh, impact ooh. outside of Flowers commercially. Zane with Pillow Talk, which was a number one song in various countries, including the US and the UK. Really? What His debut song, song was That's absolutely song. inescapable, especially Stop coming off that, of the One Direction <laughs> title. But unfortunately, his following Shut singles up. failed to gain an equal amount of traction, and his biggest songs since then have been features. While Mind of Mine was Jesus. far from a failure, Pillow Talk was by far and wide its only moment. Mm -hmm. Dawn FM by The Weeknd, Great album, very intricate and cohesive, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, I believe it was released a bit too close under After Hours Rain, so it didn't necessarily get its proper just due. When this album was released, After Hours singles were still sitting in the I top 10 of the charts, which led to Take My Breath Away being the only real moderate hit or hit at all from this great album. How does that sound? How can we talk about this subject away? without mentioning one of the most ill fated choices for a lead single in pop history? with Miss Carly Rae Jepsen's I Really Like You, which unfortunately painted her into a corner as a one-trick pony. Although it is a good pop song, there were so many options and so many stronger choices. I Really Like You managed to reach the top 40 in multiple countries and had a big star-studded music video. While critics and pop fans everywhere would spend the eternity trying to explain that Carly Rae Jepsen is, is this more the than call a me baby, baby girl? girl. Oh. This song did a look I guess that is listen I'm just getting more and more convinced that something's there I know I joke about this but no I'm really starting to believe I mean 
it's possible that he would, of course, say the name of that song because it is her most popular song. But to say the exact phrase that I said at the exact same time, call me maybe girl, something is there, okay? I need to strengthen my power somehow. I'm going to Google this. I need to talk to someone who can help me because there is something there and you can't deny it. If you watch me enough, you know. Sorry. A little bit for her career. I'll leave it alone. But thanks to the Emotion album and her various albums since then, she's an underground pop This is icon. getting scary. Britney Jean by Britney Spears was a true disaster of an album that felt vague and Ooh. impersonal despite its title. It's an album that should have honestly Ooh. never happened Ooh. because it's Maya Jean. Maya Marie, Britney's background singer, is very prominent on this album. Oh. Work Itch was the only hit from this album, and it's fun, it's okay. You know, I can see it especially appealing to a Zumba class. Over a decade after its release, it still hasn't sold 500,000 copies. Oh. I will say, I think the song Perfume is good, and mature, and maybe should have been the benchmark for the direction of the entire album. Justin Bieber with Changes. This man has had steady and huge success since before he hit puberty. But yes. Changes was a real blip in his career, not only commercially, but artistically. Changes, it was a pretty bad album. Terrible lead single with Yummy, and an even worse- Y'all gotta stop with the slander, okay? That is your opinion, okay? And you don't have to like the goddamn song. Okay, we get it, you don't like it, we don't care, okay? <laughs> By we, I mean the, the Yummy crew. <laughs> The people who like the song. We don't care. And it's so funny. I I, uh, <laughs> I just did. I went over my Spotify top songs on my Patreon recently. Okay. So I put up a whole video going through all of my top songs. Showing them playing like snippets of it or whatever the case. That was a fun video to make. Anyway. But in my top songs of the year. Yummy was one of them. And I, <laughs> I talked about that bit. I'm like I don't know why people think I'm trolling when I say I like the song. But I've seen people like say that to me, especially like I've posted about it on <laughs> on Instagram. People DM me like, oh, you got to be trolling or oh, you so funny, you trolling. I'm like, why do y'all think I'm trolling? Like, I'm dead ass serious. I, I listen to that song. Like, I don't listen to it every day, obviously, <laughs> but I definitely will go back to it. I listen to it enough for it to be in one of my top songs of 2023. So I'm just like. The fact that some of y'all can't comprehend that people have different likes and dislikes, that's what's weird to me. <laughs> y'all think it's weird that I like the song. I think it's weird that you cannot understand that people like different stuff. How How is that going over your head? I'm, I'm so confused. Do y'all think we all the same person? I don't get it. We don't all have the same taste in music. We don't all have the same interests. We don't like the same sound. So there's that, all right? But keep yummy out your goddamn mouth. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> That's all I got. Well, surrounding the promotion of the Tied song. Of the yummy was the only hit from this album and it felt more like a laugh. Exa song. Exactly, it was a hit. Y'all thought it was so cool to hate on it, but it was clearly a hit. A lot of people were streaming it. It got hella views on YouTube. So somebody liking it, somebody out there lying. As much as y'all wanna be followers and, and be like, oh, we hate it, yeah. Y'all are a goddamn lie. Somebody's lying. Because who the fuck was streaming it? Who made it a hit? Who ran up the numbers on YouTube? <laughs> who? As well as an attraction for conspiracy theorists. It also had comeback hype. Justin did manage to get another medium hit with this album cycle. And that was Intentions. Which I do like better. There's nothing outstanding about it. But it's the type of song you play when you want background music that doesn't stimulate you. But to say the least, changes came and went considerably faster than any era or album he had released before. But the thing about Justin Bieber is his flops are really only flops for his standards. He's the ultimate coaster of the pop world. Thanks. He's built up so much name recognition and is a hits machine. And in that sense, I feel he'll always have a big hit or two because he's a pop radio darling. Scarlet by Doja Cat is essentially the Paint the Town Red album, just as Endless Summer Vacation is the Flowers album, Endless Scarlet Vacation. Sam Smith with Gloria. Ooh, I've talked about, about this Sam era in bits and pieces, Why is that Sam I think Cook? most people Sam understood Cook? what I was saying. But some people hear what they want to hear, and you have to over-explain on the internet sometimes. I explain shit. I don't think there's anything wrong with Sam Smith embracing a freer, creative space. That's what being an artist is all about. At the same time, just because Sam is embracing something new, 
doesn't mean it's without its flaws. And I guess my personal feelings towards the unholy transformation and whatnot is that I feel it's all led by vanity. It tries to be shocking and perhaps it's visually shocking to some people, but the music and message itself I will use the word is shocking. just super empty. There's nothing going on. And I don't think the music is that good to justify a shock jock vanity project. Ooh. Like the song Unholy, it has grown on me in the most general sense. The type of song you bop your head to if it comes on, but it's not something you really seek out. And the most unholy thing Sam and Kim could talk about was infidelity, which is just funny to me considering yeah. all the over the top imagery. Don't get me wrong, infidelity is certainly bad and perhaps unholy, but it just comes across so disjointed with the type of antics that were presented. That's like vanilla. I get what you're saying. Yeah, um, I'm not sure exactly why someone recommended that I watch this vid. Because, yeah, I don't know these people's music whatsoever. Pop is just not a favorite genre of mine whatsoever. I mean, obviously, there are some exceptions. And, um, you know, I did post my top favorite genres of the year uh, from Spotify. I posted that on my Instagram. And there were quite a few people saying... Oh, I thought you don't listen to pop. Why is pop one of your top genres? First off, it was number five. It was the last one. <laughs> it was at the bottom. But um, when I went over my top songs um, on Spotify, on my Patreon, I filtered those top songs and they showed like uh, Doja Cat. They consider her pop. They showed Beyonce, which they consider pop. Um, the Weeknd. Um, there were a couple other people that I was like, this is pop. I want to say Post Malone or something like that. They just consider, um, things pop that I personally don't. I mean, Doja does have some pop songs, but the, the songs that I listened to her, uh, or that I listened to by her, uh, were not populated at all. Like Demons was one of my top songs of the year. I want to say Paint the Town Red. Uh, I'm That Girl, Beyonce. None of those sound like pop, but they just put them under that genre. So there's that so that's why <laughs> it was coming up as one of my top genres anyway <laughs> uh all in all of course there are some exceptions like yummy um where i will like a pop song but overall <laughs> overall um it's just not it's not my go-to personally but you know everybody has different likes and dislikes like what you like love that for you anyway y'all let me know what y'all think though let me know what the videos i'm gonna watch and i'll see y'all the next time Bye.